students uh, welcome to experimental techniques and material characterization lecture number five uh, in this lecture uh, we will continue our discussion on scanning electron microscopy this will be the part number uh, five of the same lecture series uh, here on we will have a discussions on the electron beam and fishman interaction and SAM or in other words uh, we will have a discussion on sources of image uh, information and uh, scanning electron uh, microscopy so let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture on uh, sources of image information uh, so you know that uh, the topic just like you can see that uh, we have it uh, that is uh, the electron beam and specimen interaction so be remember electron beam and specimen interaction is the key factor because of which uh, the electron microscopy become possible. I mean, we have the possibility of getting the image uh, with the help of electron microscopy just because of the uh, beam, uh, electron beam and specimen uh, interactions. So here uh, we have the summary for the incident beam interaction with the sample and as a result of the information uh, that is being created uh, uh, after uh, being interacting with the sample. Uh, by the electron beam. So here you can see that uh, when the electron beam uh, strikes the sample, so both photons and electron signals are emitted. So here you can see that it's more easily uh, understandable. Uh, I mean, uh, the process here you can see. Uh, first of all, we have the incident electron beam uh, that is on the sample. So as a result of that, you can see that uh, the signal that has been produced as a result of the intera uh, interaction that is, uh, we have. Uh, outer electron so what the information the outer electrons it get from the sample uh, so it gets it uh, give us the information about the surface uh, sensitive, uh, sensitive uh, compositional information I mean uh, the outer electron that's been emitted after the incident beam interaction with the sample uh, so it gave about uh, the information about the sensitivity of the surface and along with that, it, uh, it gave information about uh, the compositions of the, uh, the sample. And uh, along with that, we can, we can have X-ray. Uh, so the X-ray that's been emitted, uh, it gave information about the thickness. Uh, and also, uh, it contained the composition uh, information. Uh, so we, we, we can have secondary electron. And secondary electron, what sort of the information it contains? Secondary electron basically tell us about the uh, topographical uh, uh, topo uh, topographical information about uh, the sample, that how the surface uh, look like, how the topography uh, look like. Uh, so this is the information that we get from the secondary electron that has been emitted from the sample as a result of the incident uh, electron beam uh, interaction. And we can have uh, the cathode uh, luminescence. Cathode luminescence get the, uh, I mean, with the help of this, we get the el uh, electrical information uh, from the sample that whether the sample is uh, conductor, insulator, or semiconductor, or dielectric. And uh, we have a primary backscatter electrons. So, primary backscatter electrons, uh, it gives information about uh, the atomic number. Uh, and uh, the to topographical uh, information and we can also have specimen current uh, specimen current uh, it also gave uh, the electrical information so uh, uh, this is I mean uh, a short summary of what actually happened when the electron uh, beam uh, I mean an incident on the sample uh, during scanning electron microscopy we remember uh, the voltage uh, uh, that uh, with the help of which the electron beam is being accelerated uh, is lying in the range of 1 to 50 kilo electron uh, volt. So what happened after uh, the interaction of the electron beam with the sample? So all the possibilities and the possible information that we get is summarized here uh, in uh, this uh, uh, photograph. So you can, uh, you can easily understand it that uh, what kind of information uh, I mean, we can get from uh, the scanning electron microscopy are what are the sources of image, uh, I mean, image information. I mean, what are the information uh, that help us to uh, generate image uh, uh, during the scanning electron uh, microscopy of a, a sample. So, uh, let's first talk about, uh, you have, we have all these uh, information, different sort of the information 
so we will talk about uh, we will try uh, try to talk about uh, i mean the most frequently uh, used parameters that has been helpful in uh, generation of uh, same image so the first uh, that that mainly we utilize is uh, uh, topographical information i mean the, the key information that we uh, basically get from uh, scanning electron microscopy is the topographical information so topographical information we get with the secondary electrons uh, emission from the sample of the incident and beam interaction uh, so uh, let's we have a discussion about uh, secondary electron so here you can see that we have primary electron uh, beam and that primary electron beam uh, what actually uh, it do when it interact with the sample so here you can see that after its interactions uh, they are being able uh, to remove the electron from uh, different shells of an atom so here you can visualize by yourself this is the primary electron uh, you can say this is the incident beam so when interact with the sample so here you can see uh, it's a k shell l shell so electron has been emitted from the k l shells due to the interaction of the primary electron beam so these emitted electron they are called what they are called secondary electron so how we define secondary electron so we say that these are produced uh, we, 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 we define it in the way that electron uh, that has been produced by an elastic interaction of high energy electron uh, with the valence or conduction electron of the atom and the specimens causing the ejection of the electrons from the atom so these ejected electron with the energy less than 50 electron volts are termed as secondary electron and that you can see by uh, yourself so this is the primary beam and these are the electron uh, which has been uh, released as a result of the inelastic interaction between the incident beam and these electron inside uh, the atom so each incident electron can produce uh, several secondary uh, electron i mean these electron while well, they are emitting so they can also uh, uh, i mean uh, emit further electron from uh, the atom and uh, this process may continue for uh, as long as we want the process to continue so as a result of that we have secondary yield uh, secondary yield uh, of the secondary electron uh, is denoted by uh, delta and that is equal to uh, density of secondary electron divided by uh, the density of the uh, beam electron and we remember it's independent of the atomic number so delta decreases with increasing beam energy and increases with a decreasing glancing angle of the uh, incident uh, beam so production of the secondary electron is very uh, topography related so due to the low energy uh, only secondary electron that are very near the surface that is almost almost smaller than a uh, 10 nanometer can exact the sample and we examine that 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 we call uh, small escape uh, depth so here you can see a typical image uh, a typical micrograph uh, that has been uh, produced uh, by scanning electron microscopy uh, by utilizing the uh, secondary electron so this is i mean uh, a typical one of the typical image of da uh, tio3 uh, sample uh, so here you can see that how the sample uh, look like and then uh, 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 I mean uh, uh, here you can see a different uh, growth uh, step and the BA uh, TiO3 uh, sample uh, and this is the sort of the image that is being get with the help of uh, secondary electron uh, image uh, feature uh, inside uh, them uh, topographical contrast uh, that is uh, how uh, we create the contrast inside uh, the, the same uh, or how we can uh, I mean uh, uh, do the topographical contrast inside the same uh, so topographical uh, topographic contra uh, contrast occur because the efficiency of the uh, generating both secondary electron and backscattering electron depend on the angle of incidence uh, between the scanning beam and uh, the specimen and here you can see that so here you can see or you can visualize uh, by yourself so what happened next uh, this local uh, variations and the angle of the surface to the beam uh, that's normally the roughness uh, 
affect the number of the electron leaving from a uh, point to point. Uh, the resulting topographic uh, contrast is a function of the physical shape of the uh, specimen. So an area, just like you can see it here, uh, I mean it's the, uh, the sample surface. So uh, here you can see that in the area where the surface has tilted relative to the incident beam, I mean you can uh, visualize or you can uh, feel it for yourself. So here the electron travel greater distance and the, uh, in the region close to the surface of the specimen. So what it mean? It means, uh, I mean, uh, it's mean more secondary electrons are generated within uh, the escape depth and the tilted areas uh, than in the areas where, uh, uh, which are uh, normal to the beam. So in addition, uh, secondary electron can escape from both sides of the ridge and edges. Uh, these effects uh, cause tilted surfaces uh, to appear brighter than the flared surfaces and edge and ridges to be uh, markedly highlighted uh, in image form uh, with secondary electron. So here you can see the effect by uh, yourself that what actually happened. Uh, if we have tilted surface, so tilted surfaces, uh, it become brighter as compared to uh, the flared surfaces and we, we also have, uh, I mean, uh, the reason is given here, uh, that why it's like so. And here, uh, for topographical contrast, uh, we have ever heard uh, the only secondary electron uh, detector. Uh, so here, uh, I mean, you can see different part of the uh, detector, that is, we have uh, a lens ball pieces uh, where we, uh, uh, I mean, so carry electron to the uh, to the specimens, uh, so uh, the secondary electron that are being generated. So after utilizing these secondary electrons, uh, I mean that's been carried and processed to the uh, secondary electron detector. And after the all, uh, we get the image at the final stage. So what actually happened? At, uh, I mean th this is the, the the key thing. This is for be being utilized for getting the uh, 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 what we can say the uh, a topographical contrast. So topographic contrast is weak and best scatter electron move, which usually use sample with the plate uh, surface. So secondary electrons, uh, now we, we can describe the process uh, inside the secondary electron detector. So secondary electrons uh, attracted uh, to collector, uh, it's been attracted to collector grid our Friday cage, uh, which is here, I mean it's a, it's a Friday cage, uh, by a positive bias, uh, which has been, you, you can see it here, the positive bias, uh, uh, it lies in the range of, uh, voltage range of uh, 200 to 300 volt. Uh, so what happened after that, the collected electron further accelerated to scintillation uh, desk. Uh, so here you see, uh, it's a scintillation desk. Uh, so the feature of this is to uh, collect the electron uh, further accelerated to, uh, uh, I mean further accelerated to itself uh, inside the cage uh, by the voltage, how much voltage it have. Uh, it has a voltage uh, in the range of 10 to uh, 12 kilovolt. Uh, then what happened, uh, we have put on a visible light that are being generated uh, with the ele when electron strike the scintillators. I mean here when the electrons uh, strike the scintillator, so as a result of that uh, we have uh, the production of the photon uh, and uh, when photons are being released from here, so these photons uh, reach the photomultiplier tube, uh, it's the photomultiplier tube, uh, here uh, the light signal is amplified uh, through the light uh, guided pipe, so the final electrical uh, the final electrical signals uh, from the anode is used for uh, modulating the intensity of the electron uh, beam on the display uh, CRT screen. So this is how I mean we creating the uh, I mean topographical contrast uh, by using uh, secondary uh, electrons uh, detector inside uh, scanning electron microscope. So uh, what actually we can get with the backscatter electron? So backscatter, elect, uh, backscatter electron image uh, from plate surface of an aluminium atomic number uh, 13 and copper uh, that is atomic number 29 alloy uh, you can see it here. 
and uh, th this is the, basically the copper and aluminium alloy. Uh, and this image is being created. This is a contrast image has been uh, uh, produced with the help of base electron, uh, base scatter electrons. Uh, so here you can see uh, what actually mean by backscatter electron. So uh, here you can see uh, how backscatter electron they are being generated. Uh, uh, how basic uh, back backscatter electron are being generated during the scanning electron microscopy. So here you can see that uh, we have a primary electron beam. So the primary electron beam uh, here you can see that uh, what actually happened. Uh, so th this is the process. The process is being shown for uh, the backscatter electron. So backscatter electrons are produced by elastic interactions of the beam, which you can see it here. It's a, it's a beam uh, with the nuclei of the atom. So this is the nuclei of the atom and the specimens, and they have high energy and large uh, escape uh, depth. So uh, for this, we have a backscatter electron yield that we denote by eta. So that equal to uh, uh, the density of backscatter electron divided by uh, the electron beam. Uh, so it's, it's, this is be remembered. This is a function of atomic number because uh, here we have the interactions uh, with the nuclei. So in the nuclei, we uh, we mostly contain the proton and the neutron. So uh, uh, I mean, electron is a charged particle. Proton is a charged particle. Nuclei has a charge. That's why we say that it's a function of the atomic number. So backscatter electron image show characteristic of the atomic number uh, contrast that is a uh, high average uh, Z affair brighter than those of lower average Z. Uh, so eta increases with the uh, tel. So this is the regulations of the atomic number uh, with the backscatter uh, electron. So the effect of the atomic number on a backscatter electron and secondary electron yield, uh, you can also uh, see it for yourself. So here you can see that uh, secondary electron yield. Uh, so here you can see that, I mean, it starts linearly uh, with the atomic number, but after a while, uh, it becomes stable uh, and uh, it remains constant. I mean, the uh, secondary electron uh, uh, yield, it remains constant. Uh, I mean, uh, it doesn't matter whether we increase the atomic number or decrease the atomic number. Uh, so the secondary electron yield has become, uh, uh, I mean, it's a constant. It's not affected by the atomic weight or the atomic number. But unlike that, if we uh, if we have a look on backscatter electron, so backscatter electron have uh, quite a big effect of the uh, of the atomic mass and the atomic uh, number. So here you can see that uh, up to 0 0.3 point. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the backscatter electrons, uh, I mean, yield has been affected by the atomic weight uh, and the atomic number. And we also mentioned the reason uh, that why it's like that. So after this point, I mean, it's reached almost uh, equal to, uh, you can see almost, almost equal to uh, 0.5. So the backscatter electron yield, uh, it become uh, stable. So, uh, I mean, uh, this, this is the clear difference that how, uh, I mean, the atomic number or the atomic mass, uh, it affects the backscatter electron uh, and uh, why it's not a bit or how, I mean, so the effect is minimal uh, in the case of secondary electron uh, yield. So, that's all we have for this lecture. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, but stay tuned with the next lecture. Next lecture will be about. Uh, interaction volume and image formation and scaling electron uh, microscopy. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, till then, bye bye.